The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on Paperless Advice Clinic Pilot run by Southwest Brisbane Community Legal Centre. I'm Carly Hansen from Community Legal Centres Queensland and um, before we get started I'll just double check that everyone can hear. We were, um, it was telling me we were experiencing some sound problems first thing this morning when we turn it on. So if you can hear me, can you please press the button that looks like a hand on your GoToWebinar control panel and we can see the hands go up at our end and hopefully then everyone can hear. Okay, we've got a couple of hands going up. So yep, okay, fantastic. That looks good. Thanks everyone. I'll just pop your hands down now. All right, now that I know it's working. So I'd like to first acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're holding the webinar today. In Brisbane, they are the Turrbal and the Yagara people. I wish to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge the important role that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders continue to play in our society. As this webinar is being viewed by people right through Queensland and Australia, I'd like to also pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land through the country and welcome any uh, First Australians who are with us today. So today uh, we've got Jim Gibney, who's the Principal Solicitor at Southwest Brisbane Community Legal Service here in Queensland. And he's going to be talking to you about their paperless legal clinic trial and going through some of the, the uh, steps, the process, the challenges they faced and how they overcame them and also share some lessons that they learnt along the way and some tips for any centres who are wishing to embark on this challenge. So, Jim, I will hand over to you now. Um, we'll probably hold questions to the end of the session, but feel free to type them into the question box as you go. Um, if you experience any difficulties or um, technical issues along the way, please send me an email. I've got my email um, open on the screen. If you send it in, to, in the GoToWebinar box, I may not be able to see it until the end of the session as Jim is here in the office with us today. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to Jim now and he'll have a chat to you about how they went at Southwest. Thanks, Jim. No, no, there's no site here, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. Just start talking. Okay. So, um, Good morning, everybody. Um, I know um, a lot of you will, we would have met over the years in Queensland. Um, I also understand from Carly, there are people from uh, West Australian CLCs um, attending the uh, seminar, the, the webinar. And uh, hi to you in WA. Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel a lot of empathy for you people in WA. Um, I used to work myself up in the Pilbara and uh, down in the southwest. So um, if you want to contact me, any of you, you can do so by um, telephone even um, after, sometime after this webinar. All right, now, um, I could kick off this presentation um, by talking about why our centres should or need to go to a paperless operating system uh, you know, I could talk about the number of trees we'll save, um, how we would avoid double handling data, um, how we would get out of those pesky storage problems for paper files that we have to store for years. Um, I could talk about the difficulty in actually finding files when you need to, um, going to storage areas and looking through boxes of stuff that might have been filed right years ago but may not be there. Um, I could talk about the, the deciphering of handwriting on paper um, by people who, you know, should have learned how to write better. <laughs> um, and I could talk about the delays that happen in getting data into the um, what's now the class system, the electronic system that we have to use, um, we're required to use under our funding, um, and the problems that can present. If there's a delay, how can you really do a conflict check? Um, there are some places I've seen where conflict checking, um, there's a delay in, of a, two to three months in getting um, data into the system. So I could talk about all those things, but I won't. 
So what I'm going to do is go, um, as you'll now see the second slide, I'm just assuming that we're over that hurdle. Um, and, you know, if you stand back and look at the, the historical picture, um, some of you, of course, will be considerably younger than I, but I remember uh, in my articles, as a, doing my articles as a lawyer, the big deal was that we, um, our typists all of a sudden had electronic typing typewriters. And unbelievable, they had a little screen about one sentence long just near the carriageway, which actually recorded it, and you could actually go back and, and delete things on, on the, the previous sentence, and that was the big deal. Um, and, um, some of you will be nodding and some will be just shaking your heads. That was really, did they do that? Um, and when I was uh, an article clerk and first in practice, even in the first two community legal centres I worked in, um, the lawyers didn't have a computer. Um, and we um, used to dictate into a, a cassette machine and have someone else type. So, you know, things have changed, obviously. Um, obviously, I don't have to labour the point. And, um, but but what, what is really critical to understand is that legal centres are now required to go paperless. Uh, it's amazing we haven't already gone that way, but just the economic pressures and the need to be efficient in our systems is requiring us um, to go this way. We can't resist any longer, in my view. Um, and what, what, has, what has really changed in the last, <clears throat> perhaps, the, the last year or so is our um, database system with which we're required and uh, we're armed with by our funders. So some of you will remember the, the NIS um, National Information System that came out and we were required to use um, from the early 1990s. That was followed by Celsius. Um, I can't remember exactly when it came in about a decade later, about 2002. Um, and now we have CLASS, which is um, operational just, um, just over a year. Um, so the, there has been a development in the, those database systems which we're required to use, and CLASS is now developed to a stage that we can actually operate paperless. Now, just before I go to the next slide, um, the second dot point on the, the bottom of this slide, it says, you know, it's not possible to go totally paperless in the CLC context yet, but, you know, that's just around the corner in my view. And there are legal practices uh, in private practice that are paperless. Um, and um, one in particular, um, there are sections within the Brisbane Legal Aid Office, for instance, and the, and the legal aid offices across the state that um, do not only do um, advice work paperless, but they actually use a system they call visual files. There'll be a number of these systems. And um, they operate casework uh, without paper. So in some sections of legal aid, <coughs> excuse me, um, and, and private practice, there are lawyers currently um, running casework without a paper file. So this is just around the corner for us. The step which I'm saying and, and uh, advocating that we, we take is to really embrace um, um, the paperless um, system for our advice clinics. Um, so, yeah, the point, the point I want to leave you with before we go to the next slide, the time for paperless in CLCs is now. The time has arrived. Okay, so now you'll be thinking, ah, Jim's now going to tell us in a boring, detailed fashion about the paperless operation system at Southwest Brisbane Community Legal Centre. Here we go. Sit back. Try to keep your eyelids open. Okay, there'll be a series of slides with screenshots showing how to move from service page in class to the action screen. Woohoo! And Nifty customizations that Southwest Brisbane Legal Centre has uh, achieved, um, and um, you know maybe maybe a, a tick 
checklist for a limitation dates or some fancy little you know custom thing that they've worked out no sorry won't won't be doing that that's another session i'm sure you'll be looking forward to booking to that one um so what am i going to do so um the next slide um i'm going to talk about something quite different um and i've i've called it the real problem with going paperless in a CLC. How do you actually do it? How do you make the leap? How do you manage to go from where we are with paper um, and, you know, holding on to our paper system, which we know works because we've been doing this for 30 years. How do we change to a paperless model um, without, you know, stuffing up our clinics? And um, how do we do it? When we think about our workers, some of our workers have been doing things like data entry from paper for 20 or 30 years. Some of our workers have been, you know, writing their notes on advice sheets. And so um, there's going to be resistance within our ranks, within our centres. Um, and, you know, in some cases, we have to be very careful that we don't so challenge our staff that we burn them away and we cause um, unnecessary distress or um, our, some of our staff could easily be threatened to the point of thinking, wow, I could lose my job here and things like that. Um, so that's what um, I think is the real, real it's in, in reality, that's, that's one of the biggest problems um, for, for paperless um, transition. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to be prescriptive about this. I'm just going to tell you our story, what we did at Southwest Brisbane. And there may be things which um, you can take home from, from our story about what happened at um, South Brisbane. Um, and take bits and pieces that might suit your situation um, and maybe some tips we picked up um, through doing it. Okay, so first of all, I just want to set the context. Um, this photo might be familiar to you. Um, I photoshopped it last night off the internet. It actually might even be your office, I don't know. <laughs> but um, it is in our office at Southwest Brisbane. But it's, God, it's awfully like it. Um, and why, why am I talking like this about, you know, the office? Well, you know, picture tells a thousand, a thousand words. Um, so this picture, um, you know, it tells me this is a typical CLC type office. Um, when you walk into it, um, particularly for the first time, you see things like, a 1970s fit out. Um, you see, there are no windows. There's no natural light. There's a chronic smell of lack of funding. Um, it's cramped, pokey, and all the offices are small. And there's there's, there's barely any place for people to meet together. Um, there are water stained tiles in the ceiling. There's old grey carpet, which you don't even want to look down at and think, oh, God, what's happened on that? And there's an aircon, which um, is rattling somewhere. It's um, functional but dodgy. So this, this is, this is um, the context in which many of us work. And um, in, in many ways, this is typical, um, the typical picture at a, at a legal centre probably could be one that you work at. And um, there's 20 or 30 years of functioning in the face of chronic uh, lack of funding. Um, there's an air of dedication to purpose, despite the struggle to survive. Um, there's a whiff of desperation, but there's stoicism. We are getting on with the job we've got to do. And we will make do with the resources we've got and we will um, deliver outcomes. Um, 
a couple of things I didn't mention. Um, they're actually in this office. You can see them. They're cardboard boxes and they're full of paper and they're on the floor and in funny places. Um, if you were to look carefully, you'd probably find a stack of paper advices somewhere. They could even be hidden in a cupboard, but they're waiting to be checked. And if you move some of those filing cabinets, you'd probably find some paper down the back of them. So um, this is the context. This is the sort of context um, that we had um, at Southwest Brisbane. We're no different to most of you. Um, so I've described a lot of the hardware and what it looks like and smells like when you go into this office. But um, as in most of your places of work in CLCs, we have the best resource of the people. And at Southwest Brisbane, we have some very streetwise and smart people. They're outcome, outcome oriented. Um, but, you know, um, they, they, they are committed to the outcomes delivering services. But there are people there that can consider working in a different way. And some can see that we've got to work in a different way. Mind you, there's some, there's also a conservative streak of people. There's, there's some old timers um, that I've actually had them say to me with a bit of a glint or a wink, not all change is good, Jim. Um, so you've got this mix of cultures and mix of um, people who are who've seen it all before and people who haven't seen it all before and are happy to step out into the, the unknown. So um, I was lucky, 11 months ago, I started work at the Southwest Brisbane Community Legal Centre. So when I went in there, I'd never been there before until the day I started. And I opened the door and went in and I was like a brand new, new newcomer, a bit like that chicken there walked in the door and thought, oh, my God. And I saw all those things, like in the last slide, and I saw, you know, gradually I learned about the people. Um, and that's a great role to have because as a newcomer, you can ask people genuinely, what's going on here and what do you think about that? And, and um, through, you know, genuinely trying to find out how the place works and who does what, um, and without being a, a, a big challenge, you can actually start sowing some seeds of questions and say, oh, my God, um, you know, um, how long have you been doing this job? And, wow, and um, where, who does the checking of those? Oh, oh, it's me. I've got to, do, I've got to check the, that box of files. And, okay, and... Um, Who's this person who scribbles like this? How come they don't write? How come you can't read it? And has anyone spoken to them? And, you know, so you can ask a lot of dumb questions. And um, it's often a, um, you may not be new at your centre, but you could probably imagine getting into that chicken roll and um, thinking as a newcomer, yeah, um, maybe I could start um Tilling, sowing the sowing the seed and tilling the fields um, as a first step. All right. So um, the question then for us became, um, for me in particular, being a newcomer there and seeing, oh, we should do something about this. Um, how to engineer a substantial change in in the fundamental operating system with which you you've been using for decades um, and how do you do it without jeopardizing the way things are being done uh, you just don't want to blow away um, all of the things we've learned and how to, how we've operated and how we've successfully operated and survived um, for, for years in some cases some cases decades um, and as I've spoken about before how do you manage the inherent resistance to change and the anxiety and fear that some some in the workplace um, will experience 
how, how do you not only manage it and, you know, in the sense of keeping the lid on it, but how do you use that energy um, to, to maybe um, assist you in, in your project, keep things moving in the direction? And um, how do you build a sense of, you know, ex an exciting project? How do you get buy-in um, by those who wouldn't naturally buy in? How do you relate to those who set up in an adversarial way against you? How do you manage that lawyer who's been at the centre for 30 years who says, no, nah, this won't work, and, um, oh, I've checked this out, and you've got a basic problem with security in the cloud, and, you know, and it's setting up um, at every opportunity to say, listen, buddy, um, we've done this for so long and um, we can't do it that way. Um, don't waste your energy and you're going to stuff us up. And, you know, how do you how do, you do all these things? So um, what we did at Southwest Brisbane, we talked about a pilot, running a pilot, uh, a pilot project to, okay, we're just going to run alongside all of your operations with volunteers as our resource and we're just going to run this tiny little pilot and test it out and and see how we go and we want to make sure you all um, see and can see how we're going and we want to want to get your the benefit of your long expertise and your questions to you know help us in our project so actually bring the, the person who is doubting and expressing uh, adversity and uh, putting the, um, the kyber on, on our project, we actually want to use you and, and to, to give us criticism and to point out problems we will have to fix. So, but we do it in a non-threatening way by calling it a pilot. And it's just a tiny little enterprise, a little experiment we're going to run. And um, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. So that's the. It's not not entirely a ruse. It's what we we thought. Well, this is something we can do without threatening our whole um, system and our current workers. <clears throat> so some of the things um, we did first was get the seal of approval. Get, get a little bit of authority. Sure, it's just a tiny little, um, you know, pilot that we're running a little, um, but we've got the authority of the organisation to actually do this. And we promise to everybody that we'll report back and um, about how we went in a genuine fashion. And if it's, um, we don't know if it'll work, but, you know, we think it might. Um, so anyway, I remember going to the committee meeting uh, a few weeks after I started work at the legal centre and um, I'd written a bit of a blurb about this proposal for a pilot, a paperless pilot, um, and it was overwhelmingly accepted. I was very lucky <coughs> in one sense that one of the committee members was the manager of the local Westpac bank and he just couldn't believe what I was describing. And um, I remember thinking, yes, I remember in the 60s and 70s having to go to the bank with a passbook and that's the way you did a transaction at a bank. And there were tellers there that wrote numbers in ledgers and God knows what the bank did with them. But, um, yeah, so it really pointed out to me how we are desperately needing to move into the 21st century. So with the committee um, approval, that was sort of signaled back down through the organisation. Um, I had a very supportive director who um, and a smart um, office manager. And um, so we took off. Um, one other thing, you'll see the dot points I've got there. Um, maybe we, we were careful not to make um, to invest our 
our um, the people like the director of our centre with um, leading this project. It, it's better if someone else leads the project and, and deals with all the um, adversity and particularly if you're concerned that uh, well we were we were generally concerned we didn't know if uh, we'd we'd achieve it if it fails someone else has to wear it it was better if uh, a newcomer like me wore um wore this than than bringing um um our, you know uh, our management into disrepute and uh, with the rest of the the staff so that's just uh who which play are you going to risk with running this project that's one thing um we thought about so um, we decided to open an entirely new clinic to embody the paperless pilot. And you can see that's a picture of me embracing the new beast. Um, and um, I won't say any more about that beast right now, but it's, um, it's built in a certain way. Um, uh, and um, so... Um, what we to, to make it entirely new and separate from all our other operations it was a, a new pilot clinic an advice clinic but we were going to recruit an entirely new team to run it and we just the center was just investing the time of one paid worker it was um the lawyer uh, me one one out of um, seven or eight lawyers that were employed um we were going to um um, run this uh, new beast. Um, you can see that horse. There's um, it's um, built in a particular way. There's a picture there, um, and um, so the first thing was, okay, what resources have we got to build this new clinic, this pilot? So the first thing I did was um, went to the manager of the office and said, okay, show me all the clinics we've got going here and all the way we use the rooms because we need the rooms, we need the interview rooms. And it turned up that um, Tuesday mornings the rooms were used the least. We had <clears throat> um, we co-locate with a DV service um, um, and so I also spoke to them. And it worked out that on Tuesday mornings, we had five rooms, um, five interview rooms. So um, we also um, didn't talk about setting up another night time. So we have a, already, we, we were running a Thursday night um, advice session. Rather than opening up another nighttime one, we wanted to do it in the daytime. Um, and why, why do we do that? Well, um, um, the, the, the supervising solicitor, that was me, um, I work in the daytime and I'm paid for daytime hours. And um, secondly, our intake staff and the people who um, do the most um, management of, the, of our clients and setting up for the interviews, they're there during the day uh, and not at night. And, um, yeah, it, it was also an opportunity um, to demonstrate what we were doing. So if we did it at night, none of the employed staff would be there. The other solicitors wouldn't see it operating. And in fact, the employed solicitors, um, there were times, which I'll mention later, where we actually rostered um, the employed, one employed solicitor at a time into one of the five rooms um, so that they could actually experience um, the way it worked and get the support of the supervising lawyer and feel like hey this 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 does work um so that's why we picked a daytime clinic um and it was on the day when we had the resources like the rooms um then we looked at the calendar system we used for booking clients in um it wasn't suitable that the the calendar system they had for booking clients in for say the thursday night clinics volunteer clinics or um, the employed lawyers clinics during the week, um, it wasn't integrated and it wasn't a consistent system. 
and I actually I can't remember what system it was. It wasn't an Excel type system. I don't know quite what it was, where it came from. Um, it might have, anyway. We um, we worked up a system through the Outlook calendar systems, and all of the calendars across the centres were changed into the one system, and so that the when the people on the front counter are dealing with um, calls from the public, people who are coming in saying, "I need uh, legal advice about the fence," or about um, I'm charged with um, you know some offence, whatever it is. Um, when the person called in, the people on the front desk could um, say, oh, okay, now when can you make it? We have, um, we have a clinic possibly for that matter available on these two days. And she, the person on the front counter could just look at all of the available clinics in the next two weeks to plug that person in, to book them in. And the, the Tuesday um, pilot advice clinic was just one of the available options. So it made it simpler for the person at the front counter just to, to book in, whether it was into the pilot clinic or any of the other clinics. And so what we found is that that really helped the people at the front counter. And um, we were booked out two weeks in advance, um, well, at least a week and sometimes creeping into this, the, the second week, if you like, in advance. Um, and by by Thursday, we basically had a full calendar for the pilot clinic the following Tuesday. And what we did is we booked in four clients for each solicitor. Um, in That is, each solicitor, there were five solicitors in five different rooms and each of them had four clients booked in um, on the hour 9, 10, 11 and 12. And um, so that's, that's um, how we changed and established the booking calendar. Um, and we also, of course, thought about how are we going to supervise these volunteers? Um, and that really was um, using the resource, um, the, the, the role I was employed in um, to supervise. Um, part of my role description is to supervise um, the whole legal practice, essentially. I'm, I'm called the leader of the practice which is um, like the leader of the pack, if you like. <laughs> no. So my job was to supervise and to check every um, volunteer advice. Um, and as many, many, as you know, that's done in, all, in every legal centre and we're required to do that under the risk management guide. Um, so um, what I had an abhorrence for um, not just at this centre, but every centre I'd been at, uh, worked in, um, is that pile of paper that you just don't want to try to read and go back w maybe weeks after the advice has been given and try and sort it out and maybe have to contact the client and even talk to the lawyer who purported to give what you don't know what advice it was because you can't read it. And so the, the checking after the clinic is a really flawed system in my view and something to be avoided. So what we wanted to do was supervise during the clinic, during the pilot clinic in real time, and not just um, so that the advices could be checked to avoid um, liability down the track for some failure um, of, our, of our, lawyer, our volunteer to advise, but to provide real support and supervision to the volunteer solicitors who are dealing with the client. So what we did, we used what I call the Springvale model, which comes out of Springvale Community Legal Centre and many other places um, um, where CLCs began, um, where you have the employed supervising lawyer out um, in some space where they don't actually see the client but it's the, the um, volunteer lawyer who sees the client, um, gets the gist of what the client's problem is and um, notes it down and comes out and um, workshops it with the supervising lawyer. And then the, um, the volunteer returns and delivers the advice um, as discussed with the supervisor. Finally, the supervisor 
is um, it comes in at the end and checks um, the summary of advice, which is printed up in this case um, into class and ch checks it off. Um, maybe changes. Oh, I think you've missed something here, or that bit, that that little bit is not quite right. And hey, where's the limitation date? And so you, the advice is checked with the volunteer. Um, um, sometimes with the client there. And so the supervisor does get a chance to emphasize some things and make sure the correct advice has been given. Then the supervisor ticks off, um, checks it off in front of the everybody on the screen. Um, then you push the print button and the summary is printed out and handed to the client. So they walk away with a printed summary, um, which has been checked and supervised. And the whole thing, when you when you close that client file, the whole thing's over. You move on to the next client. There's no checking weeks later. There's no reading scribbled notes. There's no ringing clients back because you haven't um, um, you know, checked it at the time of the advice. So that's the system um, of supervision we wanted to use, the model you wanted to use. And um, the last thing on, on the dot point on this slide, you'll see intake workers I've got at the front line it became very clear very soon on that we needed to work very carefully with um, those important workers and support them and listen to them and to work with them um, when they came up with um, real or um, imagined um, objections or reasons why they couldn't um, do what we were required to, for them to do to, to run the clinic. Um, <clears throat> How are you going out there? You're still there? I can't hear you. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the next slide um, um, deals with training. Um, so I haven't um, talked about recruiting the test pilots, the the he. Um, volunteer solicitors. Um, so we, we, we recruited six or eight volunteer um, solicitors and um, a small number of law students who were available during Tuesdays in the daytime. Um, I particularly um, sought lawyers, who solicitors who were admitted um, in many cases, in all cases oh, except one, the recruits had never actually practiced um, in, in a firm, um, in a paid job. But some had had experience, um, work experience, but they were mostly people who had come to law a bit later. They already had um, income by way of other employment. They had um, um, worked up and got themselves uh, admitted as solicitors and they were looking to get the necessary experience to to then um, go job seeking as a solicitor. Um, um, and um, it took um, quite a bit of time to find those. So we advertised for volunteer lawyers and law students. We had um, a whole lot of people um, um, apply and write to us and send CVs and there was already a whole database of volunteers who had um, volunteered over the past 12 months to come. So I um, studied and raked through that and um, um, I interviewed people. Um, some looked good and, and expressed their willingness but when it came to it and you actually they, they, they just weren't available because something had shown up, you know, all of a sudden, um, they had a job, which was great, or um, they, you know they had they were pregnant or something like that, which is also great. But you know, um, so it really was a job to nail down um, six solicitors and two students. Um, uh, don't underestimate that. Then um, we um, launched into training, and I was so fortunate that we found um, a solicitor 
who wanted to um, volunteer, um, but she had experience not just um, in, in a, not just in law. She didn't have a lot of experience as a solicitor, but um, she had lots of useful experience as she'd um, been the project leader in um, moving the state Queensland State Electoral Commission from paper into a paperless operation. She was the actual project leader who'd worked a number of years and um, led that transition. So she clearly had the sort of skills we wanted for this project and um, she became what I called our project leader and still refer to her as the project leader. I'm just um, a supervising lawyer. So um, um, I worked with her to introduce her to the class system and um, also to understand the, how we gave advice and um, introduce her to a risk management um, guide and um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And um, so I worked with the project leader, working her up and, um, sh and introducing her to class so that she could work out a training um, manual, really, a way that we could actually train these brand new volunteers to run with class. Um, it, then we um, um, nominated, I've got on the slide a four week training program. It was actually over three weeks and it wasn't whole weeks. They were three days each Tuesday for three weeks, getting people used to coming to the center. Um, the training um, wasn't just about class. Uh, we start we all through the training we promoted and worked up a team so that we had a team of dedicated volunteers who worked as a team and um, the idea was that by the time we opened the clinic they would feel comfortable about pooling knowledge and coming and workshopping each problem with the supervising lawyer and we would have a way of communicating respectfully where um, they um, their work was highly valued etc and um, we would have a way of the supervisor working with the lawyers um, um, and in a way that they could take direction and correction when it came to recording the advices um, the second part of the training was just to talk about the concept of paperless um, and and to talk about how we were engaged together in a project. It was a pilot. We would have failures, etc. cetera, um, and we would learn along the way, and um, our system would change as we worked through it. Things would change, and how exciting this was. Um, then um, we talked about um, how essential the whole volunteer thing is. It's an essential um, part of the Community Legal Centre project generally. And um, then we talked about um, nitty gritty stuff um, about how to run an interview um, and um, how, how to manage client expectations, particularly in this project, which was um, um, to, to tell the client from the start how we ran um, in, ran and produced the advice services um, through teamwork so that um, the the client was comfortable with the lawyers, the volunteer lawyers going out and discussing their issue and sometimes a supervising lawyer coming in and working in a team. Um, <clears throat> we, um, we did a fair amount of work so that our lawyers understood the requirements um, of our practice as per the risk management guide. And then we talked about class. Um, each week, the last part of the training days was um, about class. And the third training day was almost entirely about um, let's have a go at it, let's do a dummy run. Um, and it was hands-on training with, with a dummy client. <clears throat> and um, um, we used the function, the test function, in class where you weren't having to actually um, enter into enter in um, 
data into the live section of class. Um, we also did a bit of content training. So predominantly our work is family law out at um, uh, Southwest Brisbane, but there are other things. So we did, uh, you know, um, someday, some some part of our training, we presented a, a, a standard sort of um, family law advice um, and a few other things like that, that content. Um, you'll see on the right hand side of the slide, it wasn't just set up as training for these volunteers. So we actually invited every member of staff to the training, especially the intake workers and the people who just did data entry, for instance. They, in our view, they were critical parts of um, success um, for the, the pilot. And um, the intake workers did come to the training. Um, we encouraged some of our employed lawyers, and um, some days we had three employed lawyers at our training um, just to, to see what was going on. The last thing you'll see um, that I had on, on that slide is that we established um, a working link with the Mackle Class Help Desk. Um, in particular, well, we, we um, worked in the first days particularly with Alice and um, they were fabulous. They actually assisted us to customise some of the screens in class to um, make things better um, um, for us to run um, the paperless clinic. We're getting near the end. Um, so then we went into launch mode and you know, this is scary because when you take off with your rocket, there's no going back. You can't say, oh, well, we're just going back back onto the launch pad. Um, so we set up um, one client every 90 minutes for each solicitor. This gave us heaps of time, we thought, but in fact, we needed it. Um, and we printed out the calendar on the first morning and every morning we do this um, clinic and each solicitor had um, their allotted client and the time slot and could it, it gives a sense of I know what's going on here. Um, sometimes we had to swap around the clients um, just before we started um, at 9am because um, uh, for various reasons. Sometimes I would get a call 10 to 9 to say one of the five solicitors couldn't make it and you think oh my god um, so sometimes you had to shift things around um, there was one day when I had to um, call an employed solicitor and say hey what you doing uh, come on over we've got us have we got a spot for you and uh, yeah so there's lots of juggling at the last minute sometimes but um, usually tried to settle the calendar by 9 a.m. and handed it to the client to these volunteer solicitors um, 90 minutes per client, you'll be saying, wow, what an incredible luxury. That's just not viable at our place. Well, you're right, but um, this was getting the system going. Um, and you needed that time because um, the, the, our system and some of our customizations were a little clunky. And um, our operators, our volunteer lawyers, um, and indeed myself, I wasn't... Uh, we, we weren't um, particularly familiar and had to think, okay, how do I get to the next screen? Things like that. Um, and there was pressure to keep up with uh, the timetable. The next clients out in the waiting room saying, I'm, I'm 10 minutes over and things like that. So we had to resist um, going ahead to the next client before the last one was properly recorded, entered uh, and signed off by the supervisor. Um, 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 but most important, I've got a few dot points over on the right-hand side of the slide. Um, we found it was absolutely imperative to create the clients in the class um, database before um, the clinic began. And um, so in the first clinic um, we ran, it soon became apparent that the, the solicitor had to sometimes fill out um, required data in the screen or else the client, we had a name and a date of birth on the, they'd been booked in on the calendar, but the client hadn't been created at all in uh, class. And that required the solicitor then to start entering and it took a lot of time. 
Um, so we learned from the very first day that we can't have any of those glitches. We can't have all clients must be created in class by the intake workers. Um, and um, the second dot point was provide the solicitor, uh, supervising solicitor had to provide plenty of supervision and support. Now, how did that operate in practice? Well, the volunteers had commandeered all the rooms. Um, so I was out in the corridor with my laptop, basically, um, and down towards the lunchroom at the back where um, our partner organisation works, the DV workers. So I sat down there with my laptop. And, of course, the laptop um, um, is networked and um, I can access um, class from there. So whilst solicitor one is with client A, and has client A's data up on the screen in their room, I can be outside and um, also check into that same uh, record in class and see what they've written in. So when the client, when the solicitor comes out to talk to me, um, I can actually do it remotely um, from the desk. I don't have to go into the room with the client. And, and um, yes, we could talk confidentially away from the client, um, work out the options, um, time limits, and um, I could give a bit of structure to the volunteer solicitor about how they would record the advice. Um, there were also times when we got materials off um, the laptop um, from the internet, and um, there were times when I would basically dictate, this is the sort of letter you've got to write. Um, or um, you can find a fact or a, or a kit, a fact sheet or a kit, um, if you go into the legal aid website here, look, I'll show you. Bang, you get up the site, and you know what sort of stuffs there. That, you, that and you, or you can go to the ACCC site, and here, look at this brochure. This is a good brochure which we know of um, about the uh, consumer guarantees under the ACL, and print that out and give that to the client, and go through this section of that that um, handout. So that's the way. We provided plenty of supervision and support. Um, and of course, uh, we, it was very important to manage the client expectations, brief them up front, um, not just about the centre's client service charter, and, um, but about how we, how we work in this clinic and so that they weren't um, um, feeling um, like their information was being spread all around the place and not just having a confidential discussion with their one legal advisor in the in the room and also that they felt oh wow this is um this is something positive i've got two or three lawyers um working on this uh, i'm getting you know a team of lawyers um and and um yeah oh sure this this particular person who's interviewing me is a a relatively new lawyer or solicitor, but they've got the backup of um, more experienced supervisor, who's that guy in those blue jeans out in the uh, in the in the um, corridor, and um, yeah, so they were they we managed that. Where are we at, Carly? Takeaway lessons. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, what I'm suggesting here is you don't have to be stuck. Um, with the way you've started the clinic. And in fact, you need to change and reset things. So we moved from 90-minute interviews to 60-minute interviews. Um, we rejigged the calendar to work better and to um, have um, categories in, in the calendar for each client, um, which made it easier to operate. For instance, the, if the client didn't show, um, their phone number was there. So if they weren't there five minutes after the, the commencement, booked in time, we'd ring them and often give them telephone advice. Um, sometimes um, um, our lawyers, um, we had perhaps too much family law and um, or, um, yeah, clients actually wanted to, sorry, the, the volunteers wanted to learn different areas of law and so we, we suited that. We changed that to suit um, our solicitors and also the expertise of the supervising solicitor. Um, we rechecked, uh, I got lots of feedback from their end, from our volunteers end, 
about how things could be better. It was really good feedback. Um, yeah, um, I think the last dot point there is where I would give feedback to the volunteers to say, hey, um, this data isn't being recorded, for instance. You've got to actually go back from, say, the action screen to the service screen and record every referral because every every service we give counts. We've got to count and to make sure we're funded, et cetera, and explain those sorts of things. Um, so in trying to sum up, um, two more slides. What are the outcomes? Well, we ran 20, 20 clinics over 20 weeks. Um, there was a Christmas break in, in the middle there, but yeah, we, we've just done our 20th clinic. Um, we run five rooms. We started off with four rooms and now we run five rooms. Um, we, we're getting through 20, basically 20 outcomes um, for clients each Tuesday. Um, there's some, some of the volunteers are able to stay back in the afternoon and we um, do things like defences for magistrates court matters and um, letters of demand and um, letters to car dealers under the ACL and all sorts of things. Um, we, um, we also do debt collection stuff and enforcement, um, yeah, help, help clients with enforcement documents so where they've got an order of QCAT, for instance. Um, the volunteers um, suggested, hey, um, it's, not, it's not ideal for us to be lining up in the hallway trying to talk to you and get workshop our matter. Sometimes we have to stand there and wait because, um, and one way around that would be to stagger the commencement times. So um, there are five lawyers, um, one would start on the hour, the next one would start 15 minutes later, the next one would start half the hour, etc., so that um, there wouldn't be such a queue to work with the supervising lawyer on their matter, and that would make things better. Um, we worked a heap with our intake workers. In fact, um, I was not properly alive to that at the beginning. I was concentrating on supporting the lawyers and training the lawyers and what was going to happen in the rooms with the clients. But what became clear very quickly is we had to do a lot of work with our intake workers and um, we had to encourage them and sit with them and say, okay, um, we're going to watch how you do this and we're going to give you feedback and we'll work together to make you much more efficient at um, doing the intake and not getting sidetracked. Don't pick up that pen. Don't write down anything about that person. You keep your hands on the keyboard. And, um, yeah, it was a little bit brutal, and they um, there were some challenges. And um, we're not entirely um, – after 20 clinics, we've still got challenges. But um, all in all, our front intake workers have been fabulous. Um, and you'll see there we've got it down. Um, for a typical client, I've put eight minutes, but we actually, that's probably an average. Um, some, some of them are from the time the, the, the call is taken on the phone to the time the call is terminated after the client's been booked in and created as a client. The whole transaction can take as little as six minutes. Um, and um, the other thing that was challenging is Half of the volunteer lawyers uh, disappeared. You know, some of them got jobs in Normanton and um, lots of other things happened. Um, so that we were reduced from basically six lawyers to three at one stage. And um, we, I had to keep recruiting people, bringing them into the team. They didn't have the luxury of the training and the team building, but um, they were fabulous. They, um, one of them um, was in the hot seat after just seeing it. Um, um, uh, modelled the, the previous week um, and um, yeah so we've had some great volunteers it took a fair bit of support it, it gets down now to training on the job and I can see that's going to be a continual thing that um, you'll have to do if you're running one of these um, employed staff 
um, were included in some of the clinics. In fact, we employed a new solicitor um, um, under a new uh, funding grant and um, the first weeks she's been booked in as though she's one of our volunteer lawyers and gets the feel of how we do this and she's um, away and on her own now um, using the system um, herself. Um, some other takeaway lessons. Um, yeah, I'm just emphasising there. You have to look at major change in the way your front end intake workers work, um, how they create the client into the system right at the beginning. And of course, we trained um, the front end workers to work with the new calendars and to book into the system for advices. Um, but it wasn't just for the, the pilot clinic, it was for all clinics. So they're now entering um, all clients directly in to the system six to eight minutes um, is, is what they're doing. Um, yeah, we use this whole enterprise to build a, more of a team ethic and um, um, more of a, an ethic that we can pool our knowledge and dialogue things and we all come out better. We all come out better lawyers and the clients get better service. Um, the big plus is that we sign off, the supervisor checks and signs off on the class record of the advice. Um, the client wins, they get a printed checked summary of their advice and there's no laborious, you know, um, ineffective follow-up checking weeks later. Um, here, the second last point, develop a tutor, a style of writing. Yes, this, this was good for our volunteer lawyers. Um, to actually be able to reduce your advice, to get to the nub of the advice in a structured um, set of very short sentences that are numbered in a in a strategic order, and it's 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 a, a, a style which they just don't have when they start. So that was a big thing um, for our lawyers, and um, of course the outcome is you get records which um, have a good summary of advice instead of um, uh, handwritten things where it's all mumbo jumbo and mixed up with the intake and you don't know where what was the actual advice here okay so that fixes that problem and the um, the young the um, volunteer lawyers um, seem to like that that's a very good development for them um, lastly have a way of evaluating and reporting your progress back to the whole center um, use the results um, to put it back to the centre and say, hey, this is the way to go and this is the way we've done it and, hey, look, we're already, already half there because and next thing you'll find your um, workers want to do it this way. Your solicitors are hammering at the door. I want to do paperless in my clinic, your, your employed solicitors. And um, you, you've created a whole um, shift in the culture of the centre that we're going this way and we're all working together as a team. That's it. Any discussion? Any questions? Thanks, Jim. That was really good. I think, you know, making um, maybe a bit of a challenging topic interesting and funny and lighthearted was brilliant. So we'll turn to questions now, and there's been quite a few that have come through. Um, so um, oh, I'll just check through these. Okay, so... Jim, mm -hmm. were solicitors recording problem types, et cetera, in class for the advice in addition to the intake notes? Okay. So um, the problem types were entered in when the client was created at the front end by the intake workers, but in many occasions um, they were not accurate. For instance, um, I, for instance uh, I had a client a couple of weeks ago where um, they said, oh, yes, I need advice on a discrimination matter. And when it came in, um, the person had been charged with um, possession and distribution of child sex exploitation material. And so, of course, you have to change the problem type, and the lawyer would do that. Another example, um, oh, yes, uh, where the intake worker has put down um, traffic regulatory offence and it's centred under a criminal um, 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 problem type. But in fact, it's a car collision and it's a civil 
motor vehicle damage. And yeah, that, that makes a difference to our stats. So the lawyers are always careful to make sure the problem types are correct. And that's checked at the time yep. when you go in. Yep. Great. Um, so another question here, what happened if the client that was booked in over the phone and created in class then ended up being a, a no-show for the appointment, so yeah, they that. didn't end up coming, which is a common problem, yeah, yeah. Um, as we know. So yeah. did you then go back into class and delete the client from the system? Okay. Louise, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure of that. I've left that um, to the front-end workers, and they, they have worked that through with our project worker. Um, I think the, the um, client number is given to another client, I don't think um, they're recorded as a client who got a service, but the stat is um, counted as an information. So the, the intake isn't a dead loss. Oh, great. So I think there are a couple of people oh. asking similar questions around that, which yeah. I think, you know, when you're doing the intake on the phone at the outset, it's bound to happen every yeah. now and then. And, um, you know, it's it's good that you found a way to deal with that. So I'll just get rid of that question. Chrissy's question, I can see. Mm -hmm. um, could you possibly email example of advice summary as it can? Where is it gone? Um, as it can have universal application. Yep. So if, particularly in family law, what I've I've been fortunate because I've seen um, what the volunteers how we get it down in the in our clinic. But I see how some of our employed lawyers um, write their summaries and some other volunteers. So we have volunteers who just come in um, every fortnight and they do a four-hour clinic on their own in the next room and I, I have to check theirs. And some of them are experts, um, in particularly family law, and they have really good uh, ways of recording their summaries. So I've, I've got um, like a precedent. Um, I've got a set of precedents from that um, particular worker and I show it to all my others and say, look, this is the way to record a family law under these these headings with these dot points, and there's the limitation dates. So, I mean, I've, um, yeah, I've got a, a couple of those sort of precedent things. Um, you'll easily, um, you'll easily find them when you start operating. They'll just come out of your system and uh, improve everything. Fantastic. So I can give um, email addresses to Jim following the session, and he can follow that up with you. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, so, Jim, do you still supervise the live sessions? Yep, absolutely. It's um, it's a pretty taxing day for the supervising lawyer. I'm absolutely <laughs> exhausted by, you know, the end of the day. I yeah, it, it's quite challenging. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you your supervisor has to be um, pretty competent, really. I mean, I, I I do feel competent in doing the job, but um, you know, you, you don't throw your your most junior lawyer in there into that role. Absolutely. Um, so Jessica's asked, what system do you have for booking in a legal clinic? So you're using Outlook. Do you use different rooms for each of the solicitors that are on that Tuesday morning? Yeah. Um, they're saying they use a spreadsheet on paper for their legal advice session. So any thoughts or tips on how to sort of overcome that? I guess yep. Outlook can look quite um, jammed up when you've got so many clients yep. booked in for the same time slot or similar yep. time slots. It's a pity um, I can't show you. I have um, have one right in front of me here. So um, I think I think it's a I think it's an Outlook based animal. Um, I've left it again to those who know better about things these things. But yeah, at the top we've got the the date, um, the day, and then. Uh, for this particular clinic, it's called the Paperless Clinic. It was. Now it's just called the Tuesday Clinic mm -hmm. um, because it's not a pilot anymore. And then um, um, there are the five uh, lawyers um, and there's a time slot under each of the names of the five lawyers um, on the hour or whatever it is. And then um, the client's name is set out in a column. Um, are they a previous client? Yes, no. What's their class number? What's their service ID in class? Has it been conflict checked? What is the client's phone number? What is the matter type? What is the problem type? Um, is it a telephone or in-person um, um, interview? And has the intake worker confirmed with the client that they'll be there the next day? So that's, I hope that answers the question. Um, this, this is just, the, as I say, the paperless pilot clinic calendar, but 
every clinic. Um, so our calendar, just imagine um, eight employed lawyers um, and other volunteers coming in and the Thursday night and there are um, I just lost count, but we do heaps of um, outreach clinics in um, from Ipswich, Bundamba, Goodna, Bow Desert, uh, Logan, um, Beanley. Yeah, so it's a very full um, system of calendars, and the, the uh, paperless clinic is just one of them. Fabulous. And Jim, maybe we can um, even grab a de-identified copy of that and yeah, put it on the website later sure, for you. Sure. Um, so, uh, okay, so this is a question of clients returning later to yep. South West Brisbane but in yep. a different clinic. So yep. do the lawyers or can the lawyers look at both the electronic and the paper yep. files when yep. that happens? On occasions we have to go back and dig out the paper files. Um, so there's a whole, you know, row of cabinets and then there's um, a garage and a storage facility somewhere. But we, yeah, we usually... We usually don't have to go back too far and we can pull out um, the paper files um, if necessary. Um, but, you know, you've got to find them and um, it can take half an hour or more to find a file if you can, in fact, find it, the, the paper file. I think we all have been there many times yeah, before. Yeah. So certainly that's a huge advantage. Yeah. The efficiency is created by the online system. Um, let's ask a few questions. So the first one, I'll read them out for everyone to hear. So, uh, Jim, you referred to customised fields in class. Yep. What did you add to help support the paperless clinic? Um, we did look at getting up um, a, a, like a checklist or even a box which said you'd um, the supervisor um, and the lawyer had attended to the limitation, whatever the limitation mm -hmm. advice was, mm -hmm. um, but that that hasn't um, come to fruition. Even though we've tried to work with um, um, the help desk um, in Sydney, they they have been um, um, overwhelmed with lots of other system wide changes. Um, we did go into ourselves, our own ad administrator, with. Uh, with the um, highest level, we were given the highest level of um, administration access to the system. We did try to go in and with the help desk on the line, customise um, um, quite aggressively, and um, but it failed. In fact, it um, blew away the access of all of our operators for um, it, we had to go back to the... Mm -hmm the systems designer and developer to get the access we had. So be very careful um, in doing any customization live. Use the test site um, and be very careful, even when you got the help desk on the line, because it basically blew us out of the water for a week uh, and it had to go back to the, the, the system developer to get access back. And that was catastrophic for our, for our uh, luckily it only happened for one week. Um, I haven't fully answered your question there because um, I've been concentrating on the other parts of the project. Um, um, you, you remember our volunteer who's the expert with uh, going paperless and, and she has so much more expertise than I. She has done the customization work, but just be very careful and work with the help desk. Um, um, I can't answer the, uh, more there. Sorry, Anne. Um, so how do you see this process working where a supervisor might not be available in real time? Okay. Well, um, yeah, it's a possible possible to do that. I think it will work better than the current system because um, you won't have the handwriting problem. Um, and the supervisor can be remote, not only in time, but in place. So there are some centres in Queensland who have um, their volunteer advice checked a few days later um, and they send the paper, I believe, to um, – it's actually a lawyer who's not actually in Queensland. They send it into state, for instance, and the lawyer will check and ring and sort it out and send the paper back. Um, well, here, um, you, your supervisor could be anywhere and um, they could um, – so long as they had 
um, access through a VPN somewhere, they can get into class wherever they are and um, supervise the online record through the online record. So it does have an advantage over paper still, but um, by far the ideal is to have your supervisor there in real time. And in fact, when I go on holidays, for instance, um, we close that clinic. We don't, just don't do it because we don't have the capacity to run it. There's no other, no, no other lawyer who, at our service who can run it, really. Um, and I don't have capacity to like do catch up when I come back. Mm. However, having said that, um, our director is going to be the supervisor in the Thursday night clinic starting in, in a week. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. So it's good you got him back in harness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that that sort of demonstrates you know this is a pilot, so mm. you can definitely understand where um, you know you may have to close the Tuesday morning clinic from mm. time to time, mm. but um, certainly you know with other people being trained up, yep. you know that may overcome that. Yeah, yeah, and, and every centre will have a you know a few um, lawyers who have the capacity mm. in terms of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To supervise. Um, so Raquel's asked, how, can you please comment on your evaluation process for the pilot? How did you go about that evaluation? Okay, not terribly well, Raquel. Um, yeah, I was alive to it from the beginning, but um, basically overwhelmed with um, my commitments and concentrated on getting the blast off, um, getting the thing launched and operational. Um, we've kept... Uh, of um, things like our calendars for every day we operated. So we've got raw data about what we did, but um, I haven't um, formulated an evaluation system. Um, it's a, it's a um, uh, deficit of what we've done. Um, um, the only other thing I can say is um, um, that it's worked in our Legal Centre, um, like um, success, it had, had the whiff of success and, and we involved the um, all the other parts of the Legal Centre in the pilot to the extent that um, they can see it works and they want to be part of it. Sorry, I can't uh, give you better <laughs> information about how to evaluate that pilot. That's beyond, really it's beyond my expertise. I'm just a mug lawyer. <laughs> I'm sure you work out an evaluation yeah, process. Yeah, we need and, to. Um, certainly, um, if you do, maybe you can share that with yeah, us. Yeah, well. or it may, be, it may be that the next questioner, like Penny ah, Carr. Yes. Now, Penny Carr, you know, she has many attributes. She probably knows how to do evaluations. So, <laughs> unfortunately, we can't ask Penny Carr because she's, she's on mute. But she's, <laughs> her question is, I'm not sure it's a question. It looks like a statement. TQ, that's Tenants Queensland, has gone paperless with all advice and casework now. Thank you, Penny. Um, so Thank just you. ring Penny Carr and ask her about her evaluation uh, system. <laughs> Thanks, Penny, for volunteering there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last question for today, yeah. um, do your solicitors carry out conflict checks and perhaps add additional parties? Yeah. So, you know, obviously from time to time. Um, that will come up during the yep. course of giving the advice that yep, oh, actually there's another party involved does. in this family law matter. Yeah. Um, so do the solicitors add them in yep. class as well? Yeah. Yep. And so the solicitors did training uh, how to use class from creating the client onwards. Um, but really, so if you look on the internet and the, the class training, they talk about a six-step process. Well, um, that's all very good. Um, but in, in operating, um, the, the solicitors really go in it basically at, at step five. They just put in the number of the, the client and get into the system there. But they know how to do the, the, the previous steps. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so I think we're getting some really good feedback coming through. Uh, Jim, you've educated mm, everyone you. and thank you so much for sharing your warts and all sort yes, of stories. I think that's really important um, in CLC world to, you know, we don't have lots of time to test all of these things for ourselves. So no. it's really great to be able to learn from other centres and what they're, what they're doing and the issues they had and how they overcame those issues so that None of us know, can, people can save time when they implement yeah, themselves. We, we can't afford to reinvent the wheel every time, can we? Exactly. Yeah, okay. 
Um, so I think that's all we've got time for today. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around um, for the extra time. And thank you so much, Jim, oh, for taking it. time out of your busy work life. Um, we really appreciate it. And on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.